In this video, you're going to learn how to 3D model this 90s or Y2K era cartoon character called a Teletubby. So if you're like a Gen Z or a late millennial, you know where this is from. And everybody had their favorite one. Like my favorite one was Dipsy, which I always just called it the green one. I actually just found out the name of it while I was making this video. So yeah, um, this is a beginner friendly method to 3D model anything on Blender. This is uh, the same method that I employed in my 3D Nokia um, tutorial, but this one's a little bit more complex because there is a face involved. So you're gonna have to model and mold this a little bit more in sculpt mode in Blender. So the tools we'll be using today are Adobe Illustrator and Blender 3.0. If you want to learn how to make this, just keep watching. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go on Google and look up Teletubby or the Teletubby that you want to make. I wanted to make the green one. Dipsy, as I found out here on Google. And I am want to copy and paste the reference image that kind of looks like the most accurate to what I want to make onto my Adobe Illustrator artboard. I was in between if I wanted to make just the face or I mean just the head or like the entire body, but I went with just the head. I felt like the floating head just gave it a vibe that the whole body didn't give it, I guess. I don't fucking know, but I also thought like the floating head would be a really cool sticker in the future. So yeah and if you want to um contact me for commit custom commissions or if you want to buy my prints or any of that i do have an instagram which is this is a 444 sign i have it linked in my bio and you can contact me through there and yeah make sure you like comment subscribe and turn on your post notifications so you know exactly when i post my next video Okay, so back on Adobe, as I previously said, 3D modeling is all about shapes. And since I want to do just the head, I'm taking a look out here at the shapes that I need to do. I need to do like, you know, two round shapes, one for the outer head and one for the inner head. Um, and I need to do two circle shapes for the eyeballs, just so I know where the eyeballs are in a blender. And then these like oval shapes for the ears and of course the long pointy shape for like the antenna or whatever it is that they have so basically i'm gonna go back and forth from my curvature tool and my pen tool and i'm gonna trace out the shapes that i see here this is gonna be a basis for blender so as you can see the face has shapes but it's more so seamless to the the initial circle the tan circle face that shape that they have so we're going to have to end up sculpting that in Blender. So as you can see here, I'm adding a fill before I just had a stroke, um, just so you can see the shapes that I that I filled out um, for this this Teletubby. Once you have all the shapes that you need, the only thing left to do is to export by going to File, Export, Export As, and make sure that it's an SVG so that you are able to edit it in Blender. So back on Blender, you're going to have to import what you just made on Adobe Illustrator by going to File, Import, Import SVG. It's going to be super small, so just highlight everything and press S on your keyboard to make it bigger and RX90 on your keyboard to rotate its axis 90 degrees. And I like to highlight everything and right-click my mouse and uh, set the origin to the, the geometry. So now the axis or the origin is at the center of each individual shape. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to add an extrusion. So I want to add some thickness because right now it's actually very flat. Um, so for that, I go to the object data properties tab and I go down to geometry and where it says extrude, I add the extrusion of my liking. So I wanted to give more of a realistic type of vibe. So I estimated how round and big a Teletubby head was. And by the way, since I'm a lazy artist, I only like to do the front of things, but if you want to do the back of it, feel free 
to do the back of it. Um, yeah, so that's just a little tidbit. And if the objects are going to have the same material, like let's say the ears are probably going to have the same material most likely, I like to join them so it's just less work overall throughout this like blender process. So in order to join them, I just highlight both of the ears and then press Control J on my keyboard or I right click my mouse and select join and that'll join them together. So I added a mesh plane real quick by going to add mesh plane on the top left corner um, just so you guys can see everything better. And I'm going to slide this over and create a shade editor tab so that way I can edit the materials and also the environment texture. And I just wanted to move, remove the materials on some of these objects so that I can actually see what's like going on. Okay, so the last step before I sculpt is remeshing your object and converting it to a mesh. So this will help you in sculpt mode. So the first thing you know I need to do is click the object, right click your mouse and convert to mesh, and then go to the modifier properties panel and remesh it. I usually do smooth or voxel. For this I'm doing voxel, and this number is basically up in the air just depending on the size of your mesh. For me, I think it was 0 0.004. And I'm going to go ahead and do this to every single object I have here. So except for the eyes, because I'm just using the eye shape as a guide. So, so once you've done that to every single object that you're going to sculpt, you're ready to go to sculpt mode by changing from object mode at the top left corner to sculpt mode. I'm going to start out with the green section of the head and we're going to go back and forth from the inflate tool, the bulb tool, and the smooth tool. Once you start or you finish that, you want to go ahead and start with the face. I went ahead and remeshed it and then I went to sculpt mode. And the face is probably the most difficult part, in my opinion, about this tutorial because you really have to use sculpt mode to get it to look how you want to look. So I pulled up the Teletubby image as a reference image so I can see it in all modes before it was just a plane. And that way I can just go back and forth to look at what I what I need to do. So first thing I I thought to do was to puff out the whole face. Because if you notice, um the eyes are the indentations to the eyes look just like sunken holes. And for the mouth it looks just like a sunken hole within a puffed out face. So that's the technique that I went with in order to start to get the shape for the face. And I really just went back and forth with all the tools available here. Like I use a smooth tool, I use the bulb tool, I use the draw tool, the crease tool. So a whole bunch of tools on in sculpt mode in order to help me achieve the look that I want to achieve. But I will say that the main technique that allowed me to achieve the face, how it looks at the final result, is by going in with the inflate tool or the bulb tool and then going in with the opposite of that tool. So the deflate tool or the debulb tool, which is the same tool, you just have to press um, control while while, while using that tool, let's say you want to use an inflate tool, you press control and then go ahead and use the inflate tool as normal. And that'll give you a deflate tool. That'll be the opposite. So that's how I created the sunken the sunken um, areas in the face. I, I inflate it and then I deflate it by pressing control on my mouse while I'm using the tool. <laughs> Okay, so at this point, I had a basic idea as to where I wanted everything on the face to go. So I decided to add the eyeballs. So instead of making eyeballs, I decided to use my Blender Kit plugin. 
And within that plugin, you can import objects, materials, etc. So in the materials tab, in the objects tab, I mean, I went ahead and looked up eyeball and I imported the eyeball that I felt like I wanted or looked best with the uh, model. And this is what it looks like. You just have to make it bigger by pressing S on your keyboard. And I just plopped it right in there. You know, the Teletubby eyes, they kind of look like the Teletubbies are high at all times, like their eyeballs or not their eyeballs, but like their pupils and stuff are like super big. So that's what I was going for. Really big pupils. Um, and I just copy and pasted this object and did it to the uh, to the right eye as well. And by the way, the Splendor Clip Kit plugin is free. Um, there are items that you you know for purchase but they they do have a lot of free assets in there so i'm not sponsored or anything but blender kit if you're hearing this sponsor me okay so that's when i decided to uh slide over to the shade editor tab and add a material um the materials i used were all from the blender kit uh plugin but here i was just trying uh you know a regular material out which you can just, you know, add a printable BDSF node by pressing new at the top and it'll automatically pop this node up. But I wanted a more realistic look. So within the materials tab in the Blender Kit plugin, I looked up wool and I found the best material that I felt like looked like the Teletubby surface or whatever you call it, your body surface. And then for the face, I used a skin material. So I, I literally looked up skin and I picked a procedural skin material. So yeah. Okay, so I wanted to sculpt the ears as well. So obviously the face is looking like in a scary movie Muppet. Like we're not done with the face. We have to sculpt it further. I was just adding the materials. But first, I'm going to go ahead and take the ears to sculpt mode to get them a little bit more Teletubby ear looking. So what I did in sculpt mode with the ears is basically the same thing as the face. I puffed it out and then I uninflated the center so that I could have it hollow. So it could look more like I said previously, the Teletubby ears. And by the way, I also used a grab tool to like adjust where the ears, the ends of the ears landed. But in this clip here, you can see me hollowing out the center um and puffing it out and hollowing it out just back and forth until it's to my liking and as you can see when you go to render previews it might not look as hollow as it did um when it's just all grayed out so just make sure you go back to render previews to take a look at how the final result is actually looking yeah and i'm doing the same thing to the hollows of the eyes now um so as you can see sculpting is really all about a give and take like most things in life you give and you take so yeah it's like a a rather longer process than my previous tutorial the nokia um the chrome nokia tutorial because like i said it's a face so if you want it to look similar then you have to put in the work basically personally the mouth was probably the hardest thing to do for me because it had such a huge hollow so the way i started out the hollow was by grabbing the the grab tool that yellow tool right there and i just push that part of the mesh back and that way it's kind of giving me like a hollow effect and with this, uh, I try to shape it just like the Teletubby mouth, but it didn't come out perfect. And that's another thing about 3D design. I try not to aim for things to be perfect because literally nobody is perfect. And I'm, I guess I would be an intermediate level now, but I learned everything I know on YouTube and by teaching myself so i don't really know all of the technical actual techniques that they teach you in design school so i just try to make a technique of my own basically because i feel like that's what blender 
and 3D design is all about and design in general is about problem solving. So how can I make a hollow in a way that's easiest for me? So just try to adjust the technique for yourself. That's literally why I love 3D design because you could have a design problem and there could be like a hundred million different ways on how to solve that problem. And it might be different for everybody. So yeah, that's what I did with the mouth. I literally just used the grab tool to shape it and then use the puff tool to like puff out the lip area. And I just go back and forth with all these tools until it's looking how I want it to look. I did give the ears and the face the same material, by the way, and I just overall puffed out the face a little bit more so it could look more babyish, roundish type of vibe. But that was pretty much it for the sculpting of the face. Like, it doesn't look exactly like Dipsy, but it's giving Dipsy. You know, if somebody saw it, it would they would know it was Dipsy. And I am a lazy designer. As you can see, when I move to the side, the back and the sides aren't done. Like <laughs> They're not done. But if you want to do the back and the sides, feel free to do that. I am just a person that usually just renders out the front view of things. So I'm just like, why am I even going to do the side if nobody's going to see the side? Like, for real, for real. Nobody's going to see it. But like I said, if you want to do the whole thing, go ahead and do the whole thing. And as you can see here, I'm puffing out the the green area a little bit more to give me more of a round, a round look. And at this point, I'm just like perfecting anything. I'm trying to be a perfectionist and going back and and looking at places where I, I felt like I could do better. At this point, I'm basically ready to render. So I wanted to add an environment texture by changing the shade editor tab from object to world and adding an HDRI. And uh, you, you can get those for free at polyhaven.com. And they uh, just change the lighting and, and how the materials look within your, you know, your render preview tab. So. And you can adjust the brightness at the background. Most of my things in cycles. So I went ahead and changed from EV to cycles. And if you have a GPU, turn it on. And I was just adjusting the skin tone and stuff. And if I wanted the skin to be shiny or not, I adjusted that within the roughness. I'm also adjusting the camera by clicking on the little camera icon on the right. Um, and if you can't adjust your camera with your mouse, just click the N on your keyboard and click on camera to view. And that way you'll be able to move your camera view with your mouse. And I also adjusted the light. There is already like a, a light that's automatically in the blender scene but you can add one yourself by going to add light on the top left corner and then i wanted to add a background image and i went with the clouds because i feel like teletubbies are always like in a open field cloudy type of situation so i felt like that that looked the best so i added a background image by going to add image images plane and I had already downloaded a cloud background from a copyright free site called Unsplash. I'm ready to render now. So all I have to do is adjust my camera on the view and then go to render, render image. And that'll take a minute to render. And if you want to save the image, just go to image, save as once it's done rendering. And that basically concludes this video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and make sure you turn on your post notifications so you know the next time that I post. Like I said in my last video, I'm gonna say it in every video, I am on the road to monetization. So every interaction really matters to me. Um, I appreciate everybody who's subscribing and interacting with my content. And let me know what else you want to see me make. So yeah, thank you for making it all the way to the end of the video. And I will see you in the next one.